today for the first time I will try to print my black and white prints. I have this Yoba Maxilux safe light and you can switch from different types of paper, you can switch for black and white, yellow light. I never done black and white printing before, but I will use exactly the same methods what I'm using for color printing. This is why I bought the small pack of foam up paper with a high contrast. The black and white printing seems quite easy and you don't need a lot of stuff and you don't need a lot of chemicals, so you just need a developer and a fix. For some reason I'm finding this notation on top of the bottles crazy strange and I'm not really understand why it's written like this, for example the mixture 1 to 7 and it's not weighted concentration for 100 milliliters and why the solutions is actually not standardized. I think it's just tradition and in 2022 this tradition should be avoided as much as possible. And the manufacturers actually follow the old recipes and I don't really understand because it's not really handy to recalculate 100 milliliter to 500 milliliter. And looking on this system from my chemical education, it looks completely horrible and not reliable at all. Because I'm using Yoba drum, I don't really need a lot of solution. I just need a 50 milliliters for drum rotation, so I'll make the small batch of each solution. I also thinking about the universal size of the bottles, and for some reason I don't have anything smaller than the one liter. So for temporal storage, I will put everything what I have in a one liter bottle and I also will use the stop bath and I will make it in the same fashion and put it in a one liter bottle. In principle, it's much more precise to make chemistry for liter solution or 500 milliliter solution or just use something more reliable. The reason for that is simple, it's just because the resolution of your measurement flask is plus minus one milliliter or even two milliliters. So if you're making the small volumes of the solution, your results in future can be not really reproducible. It really depends on your taste, how you want to prepare the chemicals and how precise you want to go with the repeatability of your prints. But because we're more or less talking about the art and single print and single reproduction, which should be not really correlated to the previous one, I can assume in the classic tradition of the darkroom it's fine and you can live with it. As you probably already see, I'm using Adox Chemistry and I'm buying it from Photo Impex in Germany, in Berlin. And the solutions for black and white chemistry should be at temperature of 20 degrees. In principle, all the measuring flask and measuring cylinders also calibrated on a 20 degrees, but as you can understand, the plastic one with the precision of plus minus 2 milliliters, it's not really important to have exactly 20 degrees for any type of measurements. But for chemical development, it's actually quite important to have a proper degree of temperature. At the first step, I try to bring my solutions to the 20 degrees and in a room I have 25 degrees exactly. And as you can understand, the cooling down the solutions, it's a completely different story than heating up the solutions. So later I just avoid this whole problem and just start to work with the 25 degrees and with the solutions just standing in a room. I don't really shot a lot of black and white film, so I have a few old strips and semi-modern from 2021 strips. When it was a crisis of Kodak and you cannot buy anything uh, which is like color film. So I have a little bit of Ilford stuff and I have a little bit of different films like Aqua. The first negative is actually Ilford HP5 Plus and I just want to try to print it and take a look what is the difference. So I remove the filter from my color corrections from the enlarger, so it's just the halogen lamp which is shining through the enlarger and the lens and the negative. So at the moment actually my enlarger color hat doesn't really participate in the process, so it's exactly the same thing as just standard black and white hat. I bought it especially 
because I can print both of the types of negatives, so I can print the black and white, and I also can print the color ones. For the beginning of my darkroom, I, from the moment when I bought the stuff, I just limit myself to the maximum size of the negative 6x6, and I want to print black and white, and I want to print color, with a size no more than 30x30 30 30 centimeters. And because I don't have any idea what is the sensitivity of this black and white paper uh, without filters and how it actually works, I start with the choosing 5 second increment on my test printer and just make a random 5 exposures on F8 and try to find out what is actually the ideal exposure for my print. For timing I'm using this multi-timer app, everybody asking about it, but unfortunately at the moment I cannot put the links on my videos, so just google it in a play store and it's called multi-timer. So I usually set up for the new process the increment timer, so basically I know how many papers I develop with this particular chemistry, and I set up the time for each step. And because I have a special cup in my Yobo drum, I can pour the chemistry close to the lid. And after it, I just start the timer and rotate my drum for 90 degrees and the development of the paper starts. This drum setup doesn't really allow you to make any inversions, so if you're using it for development of the film, in the manual it's much better to just make a few inversions before you start rotation of this drum. So after development of the paper I just put the solution back in the bottle, start the fixing process for 15 seconds with exactly the same procedure. At the beginning I just kept the bottles closed but later I just keep them completely open and continue with the development, just pouring solution back and forward, and it's much easier and much simpler and much more controllable than the trace. Maybe it's a lot of fun to looking on top of the negative while it's developing inside the tray, but I personally anyway using the drum, because first of all it's taking much less space, I don't need a flat surface when I put the trays, I cannot turn it around, you know, in the darkness. And what is actually more important, I think, for some of the people, at least of my subscribers, it's much faster, so I don't need to clean up anything, so I have uh, bottles, and you can use only two bottles, so development and a fixer. And after you basically wash the print inside the drum, print and drum also is clean, so you basically can put it on the shelf to dry. And you can continue with the printing anytime you want. And at the moment when I basically established this process, I don't really understand why everybody using trays for black and white photography. If you want to make black and white prints with a size up to 25 to 30, you can just buy this type of drum, have a two bottles with the chemicals, have your enlarger and one lens. It's relatively cheap and complex setup, so it's not really a big deal and you can do it like on evening in half an hour, you can print a lot of different types of prints. And trust me, just printing in the modern world, if you never tried before, just to create the silver halide print, fully manual, it will change the appearance, how you look at the photos, how you take the photos, how you care about the craft and what exactly you print and what exactly you post on your Instagram, for example. So let's open up the drum and check the first development what I make and if I have anything on the paper at all. So I have a range of exposures, so let's quickly dry it on the wall and because this is the same resin coat paper with the one layer of black and white it's faster to dry and because I choose high contrast on this particular print you can see it's crazy high contrast you have a lot of grain which I like and you have a lot of contrast on top of your picture so if you're a small hobbyist you don't need to care about any type of filtration you can just buy this simple paper kit and experiment with your work with your craft and with your prints Probably this first print is not really conclusive, so I will just print it on a 10x15 print. 
on my small easel and take a look what results I have. So I set up 15 seconds of exposure, make the full development cycle, which is basically 50 seconds of development, 15 seconds of stop and one minute of fix. And I get this print and this is really a nice print. I see a lot of grain, it's high contrast, it's glossy and it's completely different appearance what you can expect from the simplest ever black and white print. And this print was also developed with the Cinesteel Mono Bath for black and white. So it means in general if you have any type of 35mm camera, black and white, negative film, you can use exactly the same drum what I'm using here in the video with just different lead or probably for small prints even small drum and just develop the negative with a mono bath so it's basically one solution only and you need a two more solutions for developing your paper and this is your minimalistic setup for the darkroom in comparison to color printing, it's really fun process, really easy, really meditative. It doesn't have any noise, you don't have any type of circulators, you don't really try to match any colors and you have much more artistic choice. You can go with a crazy high contrast, you can go with a high grain, you can create completely different looks on the same exact picture. And probably this is why a lot of people really like the black and white photography only because even simplest shot what you create in the dark room looks and appears completely different what you can expect from any type of modern digital camera or your phone. And also I really like this FOMA paper, it's extremely cheap. You have 100 sheets of paper inside this bag. And if you compare these two prints, it's actually 5 second difference of your exposure. So I will just try to make one more exposure with a close down aperture with a 10 seconds of exposure. And this print is probably too bright, but I just want to experiment with the paper and experiment with the latitude of exposure. And as you can see here, it's also quite reasonable and quite usable print. For sure it's not like pure fine art printing, but as you can imagine for small hobbyist or to just have a fun with your photos, it's quite easy to print. So I quickly make these three prints for my test results and the middle print what you have here is 10 seconds and the right print is 15 seconds and the left print is actually the 10 seconds but stopped down. So the printing error and your flexibility in exposure in the black and white printing is much much higher than the color printing, which I like, so it gives you more flexibility with your results and you can create completely different picture from exactly the same picture with just cropping and creating different types of shadowing and dodging and burning. So I will load the next negative, this is actually Aqua film which I bought in a local DM supermarket. This is actually really cheap film and I have 36 exposure on this film, so let's focus down on the grain and start processing this negative. So I will just run the same settings of exposure with the three different steps. So I shadow down with a 5 seconds increment, 15 seconds on my exposure and get this amazing print right from the beginning. And as you can see, it's much easier to make an exposure wedge here. And I will select this 10 second increment. And because the sky is too transparent, I will burn the sky for 10 seconds more. And at the moment I'm thinking like a black and white photo have much more artistic choices. It's much more forgiving in terms of printing and development and pushing and pulling of film. And you don't need to combine a lot of complicated stuff with the color photography like a temperature, get ideal concentrations and try to work out the three or even four layers on the Fujifilm to make a perfect color all over the picture. And what I really like about this small print, if you burn the picture more, you can create a texture on top of the sky. And this is completely different experience in comparison to chromogenic printing with the Array 4 process. 
I really like this experience and I for sure will print black and white more in future and make more photos, especially with the medium format film. Thank you for watching and see you in the next videos.